G'day guys, welcome back into another video, and in today's video, I'll be doing my season predictions for 2023 with my medal winners and my flag winners as well. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share, hit the bell, and without further ado, let's get straight into this video. So, coming in at number 18, I know a few people, I've seen a few people have their, uh, this team at 18, I have the Hawthorne Hawks. Now, looking at their practice match against Collingwood a few days ago, they actually played alright. I'm, I'm a bit... I'm, I'm a bit weirded out why I put them 18th, because they could play some good footy this year against maybe the Catters in the in Eastern Monday. They normally put up a good fight. Hawthorne literally play like uh, a, a top eight side against the Catters uh, in the Eastern Monday clash. They'll probably pick up a few wins maybe uh, against West Coast, North Melbourne, GWS, you name it. Losing Jack Gunston and Tom Mitchell will definitely put them a hole and put them a bit, uh, a bit down. Also, Ben McAvoy retiring. That will hurt them a bit with a ruckman position. They don't have any too, they don't have too many key forwards. They do have Mitch Lewis, which he could probably bag about 30 to 40 goals, which it will be pretty handy for the Hawks for the 2023. But yeah, uh, 18th the Hawthorne. Coming in at 17th, we have GWS. Now the Giants, they've lost all all their all their talent really. They lost Tim Taranto, Jacob Hopper, putting Toby Green as a captain and having. Steven Canelio, Josh Kelly, they're really the only players that can probably be a bit hopeful for that team for the next few years. But once they go, don't know what they're going to be doing. They're going to be stuck down there for quite some time. They're going to be playing like they did when they first joined the AFL. But yeah, I don't know how the Giants will go in 2023. Coming in at number 16, we have the West Coast Eagles. Now the Eagles. They're not a bad side. They actually played all right in some of the practice matches. Really, they actually played. Pre they played. They beat Power Port. They play really shitty against Adelaide, which was I, th I was pretty sure was going to happen. But yeah, in tw going back to their 2018 dads when they won the premiership, all those players were 30 and aging, and they're not like Geelong. I don't like West Coast because they are an old team, and I do respect them. Like losing Junior Rioli. Getting Jaden Hunt in the side could help them a bit. I think Hunt wants to join their team just so we can get some, some more games, which is fair enough. But yeah, uh, West Coast, yeah, they're not a bad side. After losing Josh Kennedy as well, that will that will hurt them because he was their only goal kicker, really. They don't have too many other goal kickers. Maybe Jamie Cripps, Oscar Allen, who knows who can kick goals. Coming in to 15, I have North Melbourne. Now, North Melbourne. They were, uh, they were a rubbish side net last year. Same with the West Coast. Both only pick up the two wins. But North on the bottom of the ladder with a really bad percentage of like in the 50s or something. It was that bad of a percentage. It was generally it was generally hard to watch them sometimes. Sometimes they put up some good fights. Like at the start of the season, they fought against everyone. Against Hawthorne, against West Coast. Obviously, they beat West Coast. Um, yeah, they fought against them really, really hard. But it wasn't enough. After picking up Griffin Logue and... Um, Darcy Tucker in the trade period that can really help them uh, and Harry Shizu and George Wardlaw those two players can uh, make a team handy they'll easily be put instantly into the side and probably play all 23 games of the year yeah not, not much more to say North Melbourne they will rise a bit after getting Alistair Clarkson but they won't rise enough to to satisfy them enough coming in to 14th I have the Bombers now I probably wish I put them a bit lower the Bombers only reason I wish I put them a bit lower because they played a horrendous against the Saints. Three goals, 14. That is seriously not what you want to say. They did beat Gold Coast, but only by the five points. I didn't expect them to win. I expected Gold Coast to really win because they are looking like a pretty strong side for 2023. But Essendon are uh, wise. They, they, just looked, they did not look like they wanted to play. They just looked terrible. Their new coach, they they might not start. They might be a pretty. They can either be a pretty poor side or a pretty good side. Getting Brad Scott, he might be able to uh, help him out a bit. Obviously, getting Sam Wenderman in the trade period, and I think Elijah Sardis in the draft period. It won't it won't help them enough to change the team and how they play. Coming in at 13th, I have Adelaide. Now I wish I put them up a bit higher because I did these ladder predictions. Uh, about a month ago, and I didn't want to write them down again. So, yeah, I wish I put Adelaide a bit higher. Adelaide played extremely well against West Coast, beating them by about 60 points in that preseason game a few days ago. Um, yeah, they played absolutely incredible against them. They they had everything. Roy Laird was playing good. Berry was playing good. Keyes was playing good. Fogarty was playing good. 
everyone that you want to play good was playing good. So that is what you want to side from Adelaide. If Adelaide had to play that and do that all year, they, there's no excuse for them not to make finals in 2023. Coming into 12th, I have St. Kilda. And obviously, they played really, really well against the, the Bombers the other day. They didn't play as good as I thought they would play, but they played good enough to get the 30-point win. They played horrendous against the, the Ds. They're looking all right. Philippou is looking promising. Wood's looking promising to take over the role of Max King. Higgins is looking promising. The only reason I'd say taking over is because he's going to have to play that full forward role for most of the year. Mitch Owens looked pretty good as well. You had Sinclair and uh, Steele in the middle. I didn't really watch too much of that game, but I watched enough of it to see how well St. Kilda were playing. They weren't playing extremely well. They're playing. It's a pretty scrappy game, but uh, after watching that, it wasn't a bad game from the Saints, and they're looking pretty promising for 2023. Coming into 11th, I have the Bulldogs, and I think they will slide at the 8 for the first time in about four years. Obviously, they didn't really do much in the draft or the trade period. They they did they lost Shaki, they lost their best and fairest for 2022, Josh Dunkley. Um, yeah, that will affect them. It will make it a bit better. It will, it will make a bond to play go back to the midfield and potentially get back to his 2021 form, but maybe not. Um, yeah, we'll see what the Bulldogs do. They're a bit of an interesting side to watch. Adam Trelaw will be streaming in the midfield, most likely. After moving Josh Bruce to the back line, I don't think that's right. Reason being is because after kicking 50 goals in 2021 or something like that, but why would you move him to the back line? He's a good spot. Aaron Norton won't... Well, I will be good, but he won't be extremely good where he's kicking 60, 70 goals. Cody Waitman will kick a few goals. you got Buku Kamas. He can slide into the side pretty nicely. you got a lot of other players that can slide into that forward line. Their forward line is actually pretty good and pretty solid. Moving on to 10th, I have got Port Adelaide. Now, they played some pretty good footy. Obviously, they did lose the West Coast by 10 to 15 points, but it wasn't a bad game. It was a pretty, pretty scrappy game. And not too much to say about Port Adelaide. They did pick up Junior Rioli from West Coast, and they did pick up the North Melbourne pick one in 22, uh, Jason Horn Francis. He obviously did not want to play for um, North, so he wanted to go back home to Port Adelaide. And yeah, he's playing for Port for 2023. Hopefully, he can stay a bit longer. I reckon he's looking like a promising player. And there are a few players like Connor Rosie who could be a stand-up player for Port Adelaide. And Ollie Wines, uh, Carl Amon, they, can, they might be, be able to get to their 2021 form again. Who knows what could happen. But now, moving on to ninth. Missy out of the finals just. I've got Gold Coast. I don't think they're ready for finals. Last season, they had their best season with percentage-wise. But yeah, not too much to say about them. They didn't pick up too many players. Ben Long might be a bit handy to have. Uh, you got Matt Rowe in the midfield, Miller in the midfield, Swallow, Anderson in the midfield. You got Joel Casbolt in the forward line. You got some other players that might be able to do well. I don't know too much about their backline, how Gold Coast's backline is going to be, but hopefully it is pretty good uh, Gold Coast wise. Moving on to eighth, I have got Collingwood. I was going to put them a bit lower for a bigger call, but I didn't. I reckon Collingwood will make the eight in 2023. Um, yeah, not a bad call in my opinion. I think they will make the eight. If, uh, the reason I don't have them, I know a lot of people are going to say, why don't you have them in your four? I don't have them in my four just because why put them in the four when last season they had 10 games where they had literally all luck. But when it came to finals, it showed all their luck was worn off and they lost against Sydney by one point in the prelim and six points against the Cats in the qualifying final. And obviously missed out on that grand final spot by one point, sadly. But Collingwood-wise... I don't think they'll be a very good side. They'll be an all right. They'll be a they'll be a decent side, an average side, but they won't be that standout side like last year they were. Like they were pre probably predicted by most people to come bottom five, you'd reckon. But obviously they outdid the odds and made the top four uh, barely by percentage and kicked Freo out of the top four. But yeah, moving on to seventh. I've seen I've only seen a few people do this. I reckon I reckon the D's will come seventh. Now the D's. They are an interesting side. Obviously, picking up Brody Grundy in the trade period, a massive duo, uh, Max Gordon, Brody Grundy could be, but it could be a literally flop. It could, it might not work out because you got to have two of one, two of the best ruckmen who have been all Australians for the past four or five years. Um, yeah, one of them has always been an all Australian for the past four or five years. You never know what could happen, but I do reckon the days will come seventh. Getting Josh, Sh Josh Shackey might be able to help them a tiny bit. Not too much more to say about the Ds. I reckon they will be an average side. Not the best side, but they will make the top eight. They'll be good enough to make the top eight. So, yeah, coming into sixth, 
I have a Fremantle. Now, Fremantle, they have one of the best back lines in the comp, I know, with Hayden Young in there. Obviously, I think it was a bit robbed of not making All-Australian. He could have made All-Australian, but a bit robbed in my opinion. But you never know what could have happened with that team. You've got Andy Brasher and Sarong, the duo, one of the better duos, one of my most favourite duos in the comp. Uh, their forward line is very, very effective, with probably Jai Amos in there and Matt Tabernard potentially kicking some goals, probably the leading goal scorer once again for them. But, yeah, not too much more to say. Obviously, they did pick up Luke Jackson. He might be a bit handy in the forward line, but he's probably going to be more, more, ruck, more of a ruck than a forward man, switching with Sean Darcy. Coming in to fifth, I have the losers of the 2022 grand final, Sydney. I don't think they're going to drop off as much as other people are saying. They have an absolutely stacked lineup. Um, obviously, they did get thrashed by the by the Lions, but so did the Cats. So that does show that the Lions are the true and real team. Obviously, Chad Warner, Callum Mills in the midfield. You've got Isaac Hedy in the forward line, with, along with a Buddy Franklin, who's kicked over a 1,000 goals. You've got a lot of players, have a lot of potential for 2023. You've got a really, really solid back line as well. I don't see why Sydney wouldn't make the uh, the top eight. I reckon that they're a pretty pretty easy uh, team to make the top eight. They do play, so they did play a lot of good footy. Obviously, they did have a streak of around 12 games in a row. But it was really like paying attention. The most people were paying attention to Geelong and Collingwood's really, really high streaks. As um, obviously, Collingwood's did get broken, but the Cats one is still alive, um, and we, an AFL record for the most wins. But who knows what could happen? Now, coming into the top four, the real deal. I have Richmond. I don't see why not. They could go to their 2020, 2019, 2017, 2018 form. Don't see why they couldn't go back there. Picking up Tim Taranto and Jacob Hopper. It's going to really help them. Obviously, they came really close to uh, North Melbourne. And uh, they still haven't played their uh, Melbourne v. Richmond uh, practice match. But I'm sure it will be a decent game between those two sides. And yeah, Richmond, I hope, I think Dusk is back to his full fit health. Obviously, having Jack Revolt and Tom Lynch in the forward line. They are, a bit, they are getting a bit older, uh, older now. And they're going to need some uh, younger players, so that's why they got Noah Cumberland in there most likely, will probably fit the starting lineup. He kicked a ton of goals, he had a, four, a few four goal games and a few five goal games. It was absolutely incredible at the back end of that season. Seriously, he, he, he's got to be a star when he's a bit older. And in the back line, you've got uh, Dan Rioli, you've got Liam Baker, you've got a few other players as well that could probably fit in that back line as well. Now, moving on to third, I've got the rounding premiers, I've got the catters, I've got the reigning premiers. I have got my team, the Cats. I do reckon they're a top eight lock, basically. I don't think they will drop out of the, the top uh, the top eight. After winning a premiership by 80 points, you wouldn't expect them to come uh, miss out on the top eight for the first time or the second time in 10 years. You wouldn't not expect that to happen, but you never know what can happen with the AFL. Obviously, picking up Jai Clark in the draft and picking up Jack Bowes, Tanner Bruin and Oliver Henry in the trade period that is really going to boost them their team is seriously going to be so hard to pick their starting 23 uh for 2023 uh, it's going to be that hard to pick their starting lineups and their teams it's seriously going to be very hard for the coaches and the managers to choose who starts and who misses out so yeah coming into second i probably should have put this team a bit lower because they did play pretty well in these practice matches but i've got uh carlton they did uh, they did beat Collingwood by 10 points, but they got sort of thrashed by Swans. I was sort of expecting it. I thought they would play a bit better, but obviously they didn't have Walsh and Cripps. They were not going to have Walsh and Cripps for round one, which is really going to affect them. I would not say I'll probably see Richmond winning that first game for round one, but there's no uh, reason why they could not make top four. They were, they were a pretty solid side last season, uh, being the top eight the whole year except for round 23. They did deserve to make finals. Top, the last four games, they probably should have at least picked up one win. They had so they had two close games, um, a few decent games they played well in, and no reason why they couldn't make a top four with Charlie Cato, Harry Mackay, Jesse Mop of Jackson Vine in the four line, Paddy Cripps, some Doherty and Magic maybe in the midfield with Cripps and Walsh. You've got in the back line, you got Wiedering and Doherty could probably go back a bit. So you've got such a stacked side. Now moving on to my minor premiers for 2023. If you've been following on, you would know that the Brisbane Lions, I reckon they will come the f time to the top of the ladder. It's something about them this year. Pick, pick up Will Ashcroft in the draft, Josh Dunkley, Jack Gunston in the trade period. They are seriously looking like a really, really good side. 
obviously getting Jasper Fletcher in the draft. They are seriously, they are so hard. They're going to be so hard to beat in 2023, especially at the Gabba. At the Gabba, after demolishing the Swans and then demolishing the Cats, I thought those two games would be a pretty solid, a big, pretty solid games. But I thought wrong. Those games were absolute belters. 40 plus points on both of those games. And yeah, that is my 2023 AFL predictions. Now we're going to move on to my medal winners, then my uh, flag winners. And um, yeah, my medal winner, my Brownlow medalist, I think. This player plays well. I will not see why not. This team could not make finals and maybe even a top four spot. Met I, th I reckon it was a bit right for 2022. I have got Andrew Brayshaw. He was a gun last year. Still thought he should have won last year. He was an absolute gun. I know a lot of people will probably agree on that. Not too many though, because I know there's a lot of Carlton supporters would, that are going to say yeah, he play he deserved the brown low. Uh, Paddy Cripps, but I do think Took Miller or Andy Brayshaw will win it. One of those two will definitely win it, but I do think Brayshaw, it is his time to win his first brown low. And maybe even many to come. Probably not though. Probably the only one will win. Uh, yeah, probably. And it'll be uh, Frio's third brown low medalist in the past five years, five or six years. It, it was generally going to be incredible. For them um and yeah moving on to my common medalist and i have gone a bit biased but not really i've got jeremy cameron if jeremy cameron plays all 23 games and he's fit and healthy i would not see why not he could not win the uh the carbon medalist obviously he was seven goals off he did not play last game last round and he missed uh first two rounds or well, he played half a game against essendon and misses the missed the next round for a hamstring injury but that is all good. I do reckon that there is a really, really strong chance to win that Coleman medal. Charlie Cano might even go back to back, but probably not. I won't be surprised if I see the Jeremy Cameron win it. Tom Hawkins, I don't think I reckon he's a bit too old to win it. Obviously, age you don't you don't have to have an age to win it. But I reckon he's coming to the end of his career. I reckon he'll kick. I'll still kick around 30 to 40 goals, but he's not going to kick as many as he has for the past few years. And there'll be a new top goal scorer for Geelong. He's been top goal scorer for the past 10 odd years, maybe even more to be honest. Tom Hawkins. He's been a general star for the Cats, one of the best forwards to ever play. One of the better, better forwards in this modern era to play the game of AFL. So now we're going to move on to my rising star. I'm not going to go a bit of a, a basic Cole. I'm not going to go Will Ashcroft. I know a lot of people probably will have gone with Will Ashcroft, but I'm going to go a bit left field. Um, a bit. I'm going to go uh, Matthias Philippou. After seeing him in those practice matches and seeing him at trainings and uh, watching highlights of him, he's seriously going to be a, a young gun player. Maybe not. I, I won't be surprised if I see maybe a Jai Clark, Bailey Humphrey um, win it. But yeah, I do think that uh, I do think that uh, Manus Philippu does have a really good chance of winning it. I uh, are uh, winning the Rising Star for 2023, but who knows what will happen. Um, probably, probably will ask for win it after seeing that game, that practice match against Geelong. He played absolutely out of his heart. He played incredible that game. And speaking, keeping on the lines of Will Ashcroft, we're going to say our flag contenders, which is going to be the Lions. The Lions are seriously too good. Those practice matches showed how good they're going to be in 2023. Lockie Neal in that team. You got Josh Dunkley. I've said it a few times. Um, you've got other players too, like Jack Gunston in the full line. That might even solve their goal scoring. Even though Eric Kipwood and Joe Danaher were absolutely incredible on that day. Yes. I do think Lions will be the Premiers for 2023. And yeah, they are all my season predictions for 2023. If you guys enjoyed, please like, subscribe and share. Hit the bell and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.